were approaching the Red River when our number four man in our formation uh, made it known that he was critically low on fuel. It became obvious that uh, he wasn't going to make it back to the refueling tanker, so I thought I'd uh, do what I could to help him along. I thought possibly I might be able to get the nose of my airplane up against the tail of his and give him a push. I don't think, uh, had I thought about it to any great extent prior to the event, that I probably would have done it. I think it is merely something that uh, happened at the time. You have to be crazy to do what he did, uh, in, a, in a sense. Uh, he he uh, risked it all there to, to do something that, uh, as far as we were aware at the time, no, they had not been done before. Bob Pardo and Earl Amon were captains in 1967, stationed at Ubon Royal Thai Air Base, Thailand. On March 10th, 1967, backseater Bob Houghton, Earl Amon, Bob Pardo, and his backseater Steve Wayne were in the same flight on a bombing raid over North Vietnam. It was the first raid on the Thai Nguyen steel mill, which was one of the most heavily defended targets in North Vietnam. About 20 miles from the target, you didn't have to concern yourself with navigation any longer because uh, you could locate the target simply by the amount of flak that was present. Captain Amon was the last of 44 attacking aircraft. As he came off the target, his aircraft was hit by two sledgehammer blows. Looking down at his instrument panel to assess the damage, Amon found that he was losing fuel. Ordinarily, he should have 7,000 pounds of fuel left, but his fuel gauge read 2,000 pounds and was rapidly dropping. Realizing that he wasn't going to make it to the refueling tanker, he quickly climbed to 36,000 feet to improve his gliding distance after his fuel ran out. Captain Pardo followed, trying to figure out some way to assist Eamon. It just sort of occurred to me that if he would jettison the drag chute, perhaps I could put the radome of my airplane in the drag chute compartment and push him towards the tanker. After Eamon jettisoned his drag chute, Pardo tried to move in behind Eamon, but the turbulence from the aircraft was too great. The only thing left was if he would extend his tail hook, perhaps the tail hook would extend down below most of the wash. Earl was very critically low on fuel. I suggested that he shut the engines down and save that little bit of fuel. We moved in under him again and were able to get the tail hook of his airplane up against our windscreen. The hook is swiveled and he could only push when we were directly aligned with one another. And as soon as the alignment was off, even slightly, the hook would slip off of his aircraft. So we would push for maybe 15 or 20 seconds uh, and lose our balance and slide off to the side. Back up and reposition and come in and do it again. And uh, although the tanker was still pretty far south, I thought with the push that we might, uh, might make it and not have to eject. The windshield did start to crack, uh, sort of like a spider web, I guess. There's a, a small piece of, of metal that extends off the bottom of the hook that was gouging holes in it. And the more it began to look like a spider web, the more concerned I became. Uh, I was afraid that if the windshield did break, that uh, I wouldn't have time to get the throttles in idle and back away from it before it hit me. So I decided that uh, I would move the hook down below the windshield. There's a small metal area just below the windshield, uh, just about the size of the, the shoe on the tail hook. And so we put it down there and continued to push. We pushed him an additional 88 miles, far enough to be in friendly territory in Laos. When we got down to about 6,000 feet above the ground, we decided that 
that was about as low as we dared go. It was time that we got out from under him and let he and his backseater eject. As soon as that happened, we saw both parachutes open. We did not have enough fuel to make it to the tanker. Steve and I ejected. combat, you're taught flight integrity, where it's a, a team effort. Uh, everybody supports everybody else. So even though Earl's airplane was shot up and it was obvious that he was going down, I did not see how I could not stay with him. To me, Bardo and his back seater, Steve Wayne, are uh, both heroes. They risked themselves for Bob Houghton and myself. I, I asked Bob as soon as we were on the ground, why, why would you do such a thing? And I don't have much of an answer other than uh, I just couldn't leave him behind.